So is there a discrete self? Let's hope not. It would be what would it, it wouldn't have any interesting properties. What do you mean by that? Nothing simple is interesting, is it? So if there were a self, it would be like the pearl inside an oyster and a kind of very valuable excrement. But it's, it's the oyster that matters, not the pearl. So this idea of self is worthless. It's like the soul in religion, a thing with no properties. So what is the sense of self? Oh, there are 30 or 40 of them. You have a set of descriptions of yourself as a, in your profession and in your personal life and in your uh, exercise and sports and, and uh, politics. And those are all sorts of different processes. And um, at any particular time, a couple of them are running things. and. The others are being suppressed, so it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> so, how would you describe them? What is this awareness or consciousness that we have, or self-consciousness? Uh, it's a consciousness is a word that you use to not discuss the forty or fifty different processes that are going on at various times, like. <clears throat> things that are in various kinds of short-term memory and uh, classification of stimuli and different uh, sets of goals that are currently active and so forth. So as far as I can tell, the word consciousness is, is a way to keep from thinking about how the mind works. And how does the mind work? Right. There, if you look in the appendix to a big book on neuroscience, you'll find 300 or so different neural structures that have been identified and a couple of pages with bad theories of what each of them do. So it's a big mess and uh, right now there aren't any very good ideas about how the whole thing works because of the old words like self and consciousness and and uh, to me the main feature of modern psychology <clears throat> is that if you read a bit of a book on cognitive psychology or behavioral psychology or educational psychology what you read is slightly worse than a random passage from uh, Aristotle, because <clears throat> Aristotle's Ethics, for example, it's a big book with different theories of how the mind works, and they're slightly better than most of the current theories. It's a, we're in a very strange age. So how would you build uh, a machine that seems to be aware? You'd make a lot of processes and little management structures and <clears throat> what's happened is that nobody's done much of that. So even in the last, since 1950 when computer science started, what happened is we got people with mono theories, so rule-based systems and statistics-based systems and endless uh, evolutionary variation and selection. And um, the best theories, I think, started around 1970, around with, with Patrick Winston's thesis and Sussman's thesis on bugs. And a handful of those, Winograd's thesis, theory of language, and then uh, somehow things flattened out for a long time and people picked one or another of these neural network theories or reinforcement theories or whatever and specialized and 
very few people tried to synthesize them. So there's been about 25 years, I'd say since the middle 1980s, when rule-based systems and <clears throat> Rod Brooks systems that tried to do things without any representations, and that became popular all over the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm.